I don't know if I can afford that game. It seems expensive and I don't really have that kind of money right now. I've lied to you. I'm not even at the swap and you've been bamboozled. You know, I've collected my fair share of Nintendo games in my life, going on and off as a kid and then going in as an adult and then selling it and now currently getting every NES game ever in existence. I want to show you guys our R, because Ricky and I share our collection, Yay! our most expensive NES games we have so far in our collection. What am I doing with my money? And now you may be saying to yourself, Rip, is this video just one big giant flex? That's what this feels like. Are you just flexing? Yes, stop being so poor. <laughs> I, I, I knew I was gonna say that and I was, Trying to like be funny. Dude, stop being broke. Okay, here we go. Top 10 most expensive games in our NES set so far of what we have. But first, honorable mentions. <laughs> now I just want this video to be like all like poor jokes. Okay, so the five honorable mentions, I'm, I have them on a little list. I'm not gonna talk about a detail, so don't expect any detail. Mighty Final Fight, we have it loose for $286. Gun Knack loose, worth $302. Wacky Race is loose, worth $304. Chippendale 2 loose, $325. And finally, finally at $350 to wrap up our honorable mentions, we have a CIB copy of Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom at $350. I mean, that's, 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 Frankenstein. Okay, there's no way I'm pulling all these off the shelf, but at number 10, we have Frankenstein, The Monster Returns, which Ricky picked up a while ago. It is a freaking beautiful box. <laughs> Frankenstein The Monster Returns Complete is $351.44. And in case you broke buttholes and want to feel like you've learned something, here's a little info about the game. The gameplay in Frankenstein combines platforming with beat-em-up mechanics, giving players a variety of weapons and magical abilities to use against hordes of supernatural enemies. As you journey through eerie, haunted landscapes, gothic towns, spooky forests, and grim castles, you'll face all kinds of creatures, from zombies and skeletons to wolves and denom and demonic bosses. Honestly though, if you're looking for something, this is like that type of game that you want to throw in that not a lot of people mention too often. Yeah, it's an expensive game, but it's not super expensive. Loose, it's much cheaper. But at 350 bucks, 350 bucks, 350 bucks, CIB. The other day I spent hours, and I'm talking literal hours, trying to cancel subscriptions. One being a, a, a subscription that makes YouTube shorts for you, and it wasn't what I thought. I didn't need it, and I couldn't get it gone for anything. I forgot logins, all that. <sighs> I needed help. Well, luckily today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. And I'm specifically using Rocket Money to cancel so many dang unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. And with this video being all about money, I am using Rocket Money as well to lower my bills. Simply by uploading a photo of your bill and tapping a few buttons, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you, from internet service to cable and phone bills. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year when they use all the app's premium features. With over $500 million in canceled subscriptions, holy cow. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash pixelgamesquad or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash pixelgamesquad to get started for free. So up next we have Rockin' Cats CIB, which it says it goes for about 369 CIB, but I beg differ because I've seen copies that have like certain inserts go for a lot more. So I'm gonna say that one, might go for a little bit more than that, but according to price charting, Rockin' Cats, around 369. 69. <laughs> boing, boing. This game is fantastic, and I think your cheat code to knowing that is by seeing Atlas on the cover. I know Atlas in recent days has been like more of a staple for like disc-based stuff, but it's important to know and once in a while look back and say, hey, there are still some greats, some fantastics 
on the NES, even in the OG days, you know, back in the day, Atlas was still doing good things and Rockin' Cats is no different. Also, the game is like a wild, jazzy, I would say like an adventure that blends classic platforming with some seriously cool twists. It was released in 1991, like I said, by Atlas, and the game takes you on a high-flying, fist-swinging romp ooh, through a vintage in New York City. You play as Willie, the slickest cat around, and his girlfriend, Jill. God, Jill. <laughs> oh, Jill. Oh, and Jill's been kidnapped. <laughs> Catnapped. <laughs> Catnapped. <laughs> by a tough gang led by the ruthless Muggsy. And it's up to Willie to rescue her. But he's not just any hero. He's armed with the coolest gadget in town. A punch glove? Is that what it is? It's like a retractable punching thing. There's also five levels in the game. It's short, it's sweet, but it's good. Meow. Yeah. Ruff, moo, cowboy, what? <laughs> Who here can afford all these games besides Ricky? <laughs> All right, can you guess the next game? Before I say it right now, guess in your brain what the next most expensive game we have in our NES collection is. D I'm gonna tell you, it rhymes with Bubble Bubble 2. Seventy-six loose. I gotta say, Bubble Bubble Two. I love Bubble Bubble One. You like the. <laughs> Great song, sure. Bubble Bubble One. It gets repetitive. Bubble Bubble Two, though. There is like all different music. I wouldn't say a ton, but there's new music, different levels, and I have to say the levels, the way the levels look, are so much more unique and so much more cute inspired type levels versus what we had in Bubble Bobble 1, which felt more like square blocks and rigid and a lot more like dark blacks in the background. But on this game, it's so vibrant, so beautiful. I would dare say it's a much better game than part one. And it also even has like bosses on some of the levels. Some of the, the levels have bosses and anytime you can get Bub and Bob together to beat some bubble bad guys. Bop hole. Bilingual. Big babushka. Bubble butt. Billy Bob Thornton. Beaner. Bad news baseball. Bad dudes. Base wars. Ball sack. This one's kind of hard to like price, place a price on. I feel like this is actually probably worth more than most any game we have up here in our set, but it's kind of hard to categorize because it's my Famicom box games and I kind of consider them into one thing. So my, you're too close to me, Light. These Famicom box games, they are, I would say estimated anywhere between, depending on some, like Mahjong, not really as much, but most of the games on this are kind of average range, three to $500, and I have 10 of them now. But these Famicom box games are super, Super unique, super cool. If you don't know, and I've said it before in a video, this is basically the M82 cabinet that we had in America, North America, but the Japanese version, they used them as demo units, sometimes hotels, different things like that. So the Famicom box, again, one cartridge is probably closer to $300, which is still pretty high. But if you do times 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're looking at around on the low end, like a $3,000-ish value on maybe just the games in here. So Famicom Box, you're sexy, you're cool, you're sleek, you're unique, you're... The next one is Toxic Crusaders CIB, coming in at $417. The best way I would describe Toxic Crusaders, it's almost like a little bit more dumbed down version of Ninja Turtles 2. And that sounds like a great compliment. And it, some people like the game, some don't. But if you look at the gameplay and you squint just a little, take your peepers nice and open, put them down, make yourself look like Tony, and you're gonna have yourself a game that looks a little bit more like Ninja Turtles. There's even some of those skateboarding levels that go across. I will say, one of the things I do like is a few of the boss fights, there are boss fights in this game, a few of them have some pretty cool graphics, pretty cool styling. I wouldn't say any like unique graphical limitations pushed, but I would just say cool sprite work in general. The, the big thing to point out on this, and I pointed this out when I got this, I got this this CIB version from Chase, Chase after the right price. You know him, the, show a clip of him. For my son! The box art on Toxic Crusaders is so sexy. It's so cool. You would think it'd be like ugly because you're looking at the freaking ugly nastiness that is the Toxic Crusaders. 
Why is there a razor on my floor? Holy, I just found this on my floor. That That's dangerous. The box art is just so pretty. The colors are the most vibrant thing. When you talk about 90s, you know, that's the style that you think. That's the look that you think. And Troma and all that wacky stuff that they do, beautiful. The next one on the list is, I would say, one of the biggest sleepers in this, and that is Cowboy Kid. My goodness, ye freaking hawk. Coming in at $432, Cowboy Kid is so unique, right? It's one of those games where you look at the box art and go, I'm about to watch freaking a man make love to an Indian right here. Stop! But that is not what happened. This is not Custer's Revenge. Uh this game is so deceiving for what you see on the cover versus what's in the game. A ROM star game, a super cute game. Even if you look on the back, you might go, oh, this is kind of cute. This is a you know, very cutesy looking game. There are so many different styles of gameplay within this game. There's a ton of different mini games. There's even different types of side scoring that you do. There's like mine carts. This game is so, 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 so underrated that it's unbelievable. And I, it actually kind of makes me mad though, that it's this far along and so many people are like, Bucky O'Hare, we know. Eh. Kabuki Quantum Fighter, we know. Eh. Kings of the Beach, we know. Eh. But the game known as Cowboy Kid by Romstar, eight out of 10, solid all day. That's Tom Selleck right there on the cover. And that's Ricky's uncle. Okay, the next one is kind of a triple pack and it's kind of a trio and they're really funky and kind of hard for me to place. This is Puznik right here but I'm not specifically talking about Puznik, I'm talking about all our different prototypes. Other than that, I think this is a one of two. So this one right here is Puznik, but again, we have three different prototypes as of now, just kidding, we have four, another one I haven't showed yet, but this is Puznik, which I actually haven't even plugged into an actual NES yet. Ricky also has a tailspin prototype. Another one he has is a game called Street Heroes, where there's actually some good gameplay online. Apparently, there was only two of those in existence, and Ricky has his hands on one of them. So the weird thing about prototypes, it's like, what is it? Where is the price? Where does the price land? They're really kind of one-offs for the most part. So typically they're, they're as much as someone's willing to pay for. And I would say with most prototypes, you're landing anywhere low end, like 500 or so, averaging maybe around a thousand or so. Higher end, you can go into the $1,500, $5,000 range, depending on what it is. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> it is, so it is one of the Disney Capcom games, which in my opinion, oh, pff, might need to clean it out a little bit. Just a little. But Disney Capcom, do I count just one? Do I count all three? I wouldn't count all three, so I'm not gonna say 3,000. It's one of those ones where I just kind of shrug my hands and say, well, we have prototypes, they're extremely rare. I know they're worth good money. Do I know exactly where they land? No. Is there a quarter on my floor that I just ran over? Yes, twice. Stop getting ran over. Did I just lie to you and it's a nickel? Heads or tails, call it right now in the air. Call it. Dude, okay, I said I wasn't gonna grab all of them and I won't, but I did just see Snow Bros like two seconds ago. Where is that? I have this thing alphabetized. Snow Brothers, CIB, a super clean CIB. By the way, y'all, we're in our top three now, our most expensive NES games in our collection. Snow Bros is about $749, a Capcom game. It's like a puzzle game, very icy feeling where you, almost like a bubble bobble-ish type puzzle game where you go up screens and go through different single frame screens. There are some, I think there's bosses. I remember there's bosses. Is that one of those things? What's it called? Not deja vu. What, you all know the word and I feel so dumb. Oh my gosh, I literally can't remember the most common word. Mandela effect. The Mandela Effect. Basically, you run around, fun QT graphics, you get people snowing them, you toss them, make them big snowballs. It's not a rock and science game. It's a fun game, a fun little game that Capcom 8-Bit Days, you really can't go wrong, or can you? Mickey's Mouse Capade, eh, mildly good. I would say of the Disney Afternoon Collection, my least favorite of all the, the Disney games would probably be, and I'm not gonna say Mickey Mouse Capade counts, I'm gonna go with Probably Tailspin, which funny enough, Ricky has the uh, the prototype for, so I'm sorry, Ricky. I'm not trying to make the value of that go down, even though I don't hold that power. I want to be Ricky's baby. Coming in at number two, we're almost to number one, and it's again right there, so I'll probably pick it up. Zombie Nation, CIB. $1,000 
thousand three hundred and five dollars so this has kind of always been known as one of those bangers right is obviously we're getting into the higher range these are those games where a lot of people talk about right hey uh these are the expensive games you want to look out for i feel like this game steam like six years ago i started to hear more and more people talk about it and again if you want to sound smart i wrote a little thing about it zombie nation is the Bruh. zombie nation on the nes is a hit <gasps> zombie nation on the nes i'm reading don't look is probably hands down one of the wildest, most off the wall games you'll ever come across. And that's saying something for 1990s gaming. Picture this, you're not a typical hero like a knight or a soldier. No, you're a giant floating samurai head named Na Namakubi. Namakubi, yep, that's it. And what's your mission? <laughs> Just saving the U.S. from a giant alien meteor named Darkseed that's turning people into zombies. You know, I, you could maybe, the U.S. right now, you can maybe let the, let the giant spider zombie meteor come. And if that sounds like a fever dream to you, you should probably get zombie. Actually, it's so expensive. Emulate it. Emulate it. Shouting, illegally play the game. Do not pay that much money to play Zombie Nation. We have made a terrible mistake, but again, that's because Ricky and I are clearly rich. <laughs> oh boy, you could probably guess what number one was. Yes, there are more expensive games, but we have right here, Little Samsones on the NES. <laughs> Loose right now, Little Samson is about a $2,200 game. We technically have the actual box for it. This is an actual, that was not smart to do. An actual box for Little Samson that someone had signed years ago. This is one of those rental store copies where they cut it and they cut the sides. So technically it is a box and you can call it like the worst condition box ever, but it technically is with the box. Maybe it is. I think that would count with the box, just bad condition because they cut the tops and bottoms even though it's mint, what does exist? I don't know. And little Samson I'll spare you talking about because everybody's talked about it a thousand times. It's the most desired NES game. I would say as far as like what you can actually acquire, no one really when they go for the full set is like, I'm dying to get stadium events. I'm dying to get NWC. Those are great, but most people are like, no, let's go with Samson. That's like the one more expensive, maybe one of the most expensive, but that's in even that weirdly obtainable range, even though it's a stupid price, right? $2,200. Is it a dumb price? Yes. Is the game good? Absolutely. It's fantastic. Some of these games have shockingly been very good, right? There's, I don't remember what video I was watching earlier, but they were talking about that, how there's always those games that are worth a lot of money that are really hard to look at because they're so horrible. And then there's NES games that are really expensive as well, but they're also really fun games and really good games. Do they justify thousands of dollars? Probably not. Probably depends on your bank account and where you're at in your life. Now, is this video, again, a flex? Is it actually? Yes. Here comes Stop the money. being cool. No, it's actually not. It's Ricky and I. We collect a lot of these things together, even like Little Samson. We split it. We work really hard to get this stuff. So, what is your most expensive game in your collection? And leave a comment below if. If you're poor.